What are dreams? They are defined as a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. At the neurological core, dreams are simply electrical impulses in our brains. The human brain consists of billions of neurons, and these electrical impulses are sent from neuron to neuron, which enables messages to be transmitted in your mind. As previously established, the source is what powers human consciousness, so therefore it is what generates these electrical impulses. And this is how it communicates to people subconsciously whilst they sleep. We see multiple characters in the show have dreams, hallucinations, and visions. We will go through all of the significant dreams in Lost, and the various meanings, but first I would like to address a common, divisive, misconception up front. Some fans believe that the man in black was responsible for giving the dreams on the show. And this is primarily because of John Locke's dream in Season 4 episode, Cabin Fever. The nature of the information imparted from Horace Goodspeed to John Locke during this dream suggests such a connection. Because Dream Horace tells Locke that Jacob has been waiting for him for a long time and that by finding Horace's body, and therefore the cabin, Locke will find Jacob. So, this dream is assumed to be a key part of the man in black's long con. However, every single power that the man in black has is eventually revealed, and confirmed, in season 6. We previously discussed the nature of the smoke monster's powers in great detail in chapter 10. At no point is it ever suggested, or demonstrated, that the man in black had the power to manipulate people's dreams. Those that subscribe to this theory argue that Locke needs to believe that he is going to see Jacob and that Jacob lives in the cabin. The problem with this notion is, Locke already believes that the cabin is occupied by Jacob. Because of the visit he had with Ben in Season 3 episode, The Man Behind the Curtain. He does not need a dream for this information to be confirmed. What he needs is the location of the cabin, which has been moving around the island. Chapter 7 explains how and why the cabin is moving if you would like more details on this plot point. The only purpose that the Horace Goodspeed dream serves, is to help John Locke to relocate the cabin. The island was moving the cabin so Locke would not find it until the timing was right. Once all the pieces were in the correct place, the island speaks to Locke through the Goodspeed dream in order to trigger the next chain of events. Just as it did in Season 1 with the Nigerian plane and Season 2 with the Pearl Station. If the man in black is indeed behind the cabin fever dream, then why does Horace Goodspeed say to go and see Jacob at the cabin, but then the man in black, whilst posing as fake Christian, contradicts this information. He says that he is merely speaking on Jacob's behalf. Why didn't the man in black literally just say he was Jacob in order to carry on the masquerade established in the dream? Why would he contradict his own lie like this, or complicate his long con? Why is this inconsistency within the same episode even there at all? It is there because the information from the cabin fever dream and the information coming from the man in black's own mouth are from two entirely different sources. It's just that both sources are looking for the same outcome, for different reasons. The island wanted, and needed, John Locke to believe that fake Christian was an advocate for Jacob. Authorized to speak on the man's behalf. Because this meeting in the cabin is absolutely crucial. It is what ultimately leads to the frozen donkey wheel being turned. The wheel that creates the world-saving time loop. The man in black's loophole plan was integral to this all taking place, as was Locke believing that the man in black was speaking on behalf of Jacob. The whole plot to kill Jacob was 100% necessary to perpetuating the time loop, even though the man in black did not realize that he was a key player in the island's master plan. A causal chain of events designed to preserve existence as we know it. There are no coincidences or accidents in Lost. The island is the prime mover throughout the whole show. We know that human consciousness is forged within the source and that the light has the ability to manipulate both the conscious and subconscious human mind. Now, let's look back at the other dreams on the show. The majority of them only make sense in context coming from the island, not the man in black. A lot of these dreams were premonition-like, often serving practical purposes in getting characters where they needed to be. John Locke's dream in Season 1 episode, Deus Ex Machina, features Mr. Echo's drug plane crashing and a flash of Boone's encroaching death. The logic behind this particular dream has already been thoroughly explored in Chapter 4 of this series, which discusses the nature of the island and its powers. To quickly recap it, Locke's dream was specifically designed to show Locke the way to the plane, which was a nexus point for activity on the island, and to lead Boone to his untimely death. This event would lead Locke back to the hatch to inadvertently save Desmond's life, and therefore, the world. 
This is why the island communicates a secret piece of Boone's childhood to Locke. The dream apparition of Boone recites that, Teresa falls up the stairs, Teresa falls down the stairs. This nugget of knowledge is what helps to convince Boone that Locke is a man worth following, even into potential danger. The island then ensures that Boone will be the one to climb into the plane by taking away Locke's ability to walk properly. Notice how after Boone is sacrificed and the aforementioned chain of events have been set in motion, Locke suddenly has no problem walking. Mr. Echo's dream of his brother Yemi in the hatch is also in service of the island. At this point in season 2, John Locke is more than ready to stop pushing the button, which we all know would have been a catastrophic error. The island needs to buy some time until Desmond returns and has the courage to turn the fail-safe key. Echo's whole purpose on the island is to step up to this moment in order to save the world until the key can be turned. If our resident priest had not been given this dream about the hatch, then there would have been no one to save the world. Echo's dream was the start of this particular causal chain. If the man in black was trying to manipulate Echo here, what was his goal? Because he certainly doesn't care if the light goes out and the island is destroyed. He doesn't even believe that the light is important in any way. Yet the Yemi in Echo's dream says, The work being done in this place is important, Echo. It is more important than anything. And it is in danger. You must help John. He has lost his way. You must make him take you to the question mark. That hardly sounds like something old Smokey would say. Ben indicates that he used to have dreams that guided him in his decision-making process. This suggests that the island was also influencing his actions in the same way it does with Locke. Perhaps it was through dreams that Ben was told about the summoning chamber and how to call the monster. Other dreams include the drug-induced visions that both Boone and Locke experience as a result of a hallucinogenic paste. This paste appears to be an alchemy of island plant life. Boone's hallucination helps to divorce him from the emotional obsession with Shannon and to refocus on helping Locke with the hatch. This vision cements his loyalty to the resident man of faith, and ensures that Boone will be willing to go above and beyond to help him out. Locke's own vision quest is a dream that helps him get back on track following his total rejection of fate at the end of season 2. This dream uses his guilt over Boone's death to guide him through some of the events to come. The construct of this dream is an airport. The dream Boone, aka the island's voice, tells Locke that Charlie and Claire will be okay, but only for a while. This could be read as a hint towards Charlie's incoming death later in the season, and even perhaps Claire's turn towards darkness in the future. We see Saeed, Jin and Sun trapped in a queue. Which is a reference to their present dilemma on Desmond's boat, but can also be seen in retrospect as a reference to the fact they will all die together in the same place, at the same time. There is even a hint towards Hurley taking charge as a leader someday. While Dream Boone indicates that Desmond remains determined to run away from his own destiny. Other references to current events unfurling in Season 3 include, Jack, Kate and Sawyer's hostage crisis on Hydra Island under the thumb of Benjamin Linus. A greater irony to this part of the dream is, this will not be the last time that Jack and Kate are at an airport with Ben. Ultimately, the island directs Locke to save Mr. Echo's life. Because the priest has a couple more things left to do before he can die. Firstly, the man must be allowed to make peace with his past. But secondly, he must provide Locke with the next link in the causal chain of events. Which leads Locke to the Dharma Barracks. And to the submarine. And, most importantly, to Ben. This vision quest reaffirms Locke's faith in the island and gives him a willingness to follow its every instruction. Something that will be very important later on. Let's look at Claire Littleton's rather prescient dream of an evil lock and a missing baby. Looking back, knowing what we know, this nightmare was almost certainly a window into her own future. The dream was forewarning her that she was going to one day be faced with an empty crib. That she would have blood on her hands. And that she was going to feel the pull between the light and dark within herself. A darkness that would ultimately be represented and embodied by John Locke. The reason why Claire's baby should not have been raised by another was less about the effect that it would have on Aaron, and more about the impact it would have on Claire. As we come to see, losing Aaron sends her down a dark rabbit hole of isolation and depression, in which she ultimately becomes unhinged and violent. And amenable to coercion by the man in black. Her dream way back in the first season foreshadows much of this trajectory. Charlie Pace also experiences dreams that are ultimately premonitions. 
he has recurring nightmares of trying to save baby Aaron. One of the dreams even features Claire begging him to save the baby. Lo and behold, Charlie finds himself in the water literally trying to rescue Aaron. We know that, not too long from this moment in Charlie's life, he will drown in the water whilst trying to save both Claire and Aaron by getting them off of the island. Mr. Echo eventually helps Charlie to interpret these dreams as having a religious significance. But we know that there is more to them than simply a sense of Charlie's Catholic guilt. Take notice of the white bird that flies out at Charlie, flapping its wings to freedom. On the one hand, this bird is symbolic of his own transformation from a drug addict to being clean and sober. On the other hand, it might be a premonition of something else. An act of love and hope that he will find himself bonding over with Claire in the near future. Of course, Charlie's dreams, like everyone else's, are ultimately a mix of the island's messaging and his own subconscious. Hence why there is so much religious iconography present, plus incorporations of his own family members and passion for music. Charlie might view his own guilt and personal suffering through the lens of Catholicism. The island tends to play into people's own personal belief systems in order to communicate more effectively with them. We see this with both Locke and Mr. Echo. And even Hugo Reyes. Hurley has a dream based around food and the burdens that come with leadership, perhaps his equivalent to an anxiety dream. This is entirely based around him taking responsibility for the group in some way. It is the first time he has to really become a leader in something, and to make a decision for the good of everyone within his community. We know this will come into play much later in the series since Hurley is being groomed to become the protector of the island in the end. It is his destiny. This dream, and his situation involving the food supply in the hatch, is the beginning of that psychological journey. We also know that the source extends its reach beyond the snow globe of the island. There are several characters who experience dreams in the everyday world that influence their behaviors and choices. Kate dreams of Claire, who warns her never to bring Aaron back. This sows the first seed of guilt in Kate's mind about leaving behind Claire. A seed that will flower into full-blown motivation to go back for her friend. Michael Dawson has guilt-ridden hallucinations and nightmares like this too. Only he dreams of Libby. Which fuels his desire to die and, possibly, redeem himself. Meanwhile, his son, Walt, talks about dreams that he still has about the island. The one he tells us about is in fact a premonition of the smoke monster becoming John Locke. But Walt uses the word, dreams. As in, plural. Which means he has been dreaming about seeing Locke on the island more than once, possibly in different contexts. Walt unconsciously communes with the island, receiving both visions and instructions. To the boy, these might merely be dreams or strange feelings. But, to other people, these events are as real as Walt actually being physically present with them. Shannon experiences a similar apparition late one night. Perhaps after Walt has been tranquilized by the others and put to sleep in room 23. The fine line between dreams, visions and apparitions can become very blurred in Lost. But the point of all these events is this. The source communicates both its will and intention to people. For warning and preparing them of the future. Or guiding them towards their destiny. The dreams are there to incite emotions and thoughts that lead to specific actions. Dreams, in Lost, are simply a means to an end. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to see more videos. Until the next time, stay lost.